Today we're going to be tackling one of the most unique matchboxes ever made. It's going to be a lot of fun, so don't go away. Hello everybody and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, and today is going to be a really fun day. We're going to do something very unusual. It's, it's one of the most unique matchboxes ever built. It is their hovercraft. It's going to be a lot of fun, so let's just jump right into it. The Matchbox SRN6 Hovercraft is a model of a real-life craft that navigated the Solent Strait between the South Sea Common and the Isle of Wight. It was made between 1972 and 1978. The unique casting was certainly a kid favorite and no doubt one of my personal favorites as well. It was cool in concept and it wasn't terribly done. Today, I plan to step things up and do a custom a little bit more realistic and more true to the famous craft. I must not have cleanly hit record when I tried to get this bit of footage, so I'd already taken the casting apart. So, as you saw, I showed you a complete car, and now I'm showing you the one that I took apart after drilling out the posts. You've got a base, you've got the casting, you've got a glass piece, and you have a plastic pod that sits on the top. So everything's apart and everything's been given a once over, so now it's into the warm liquid goo. After some time in the goo, it's time to take it and wash it off with a brush and prepare it for the custom paint job that I have in mind. This is a very proud and happy moment for me because I have remembered to drill and tap my posts prior to putting the paint on. Clearly you can indeed teach an old dog new tricks. To all of you out there who have been rooting for me to remember these things, I thank you. In my earlier videos, you'll note that I did not tap the post. That was before I found this great, small, lightweight tap handle from Bright Vision. Now it's a staple of my builds. I love this thing, and it makes tapping so much easier, at, at least for me with my big old fumble fingers. And now it's off to the paint booth. I looked at a lot of pictures of the real SRN6 and saw many of them in a two-tone red and white, so that's the scheme I'm going to go with. After I lay down some Tamiya Fine Primer, I'm going to put on the first color, Tamiya X2 Gloss White, over the entire vehicle and I'll let that dry. To get a good smooth coat, as I always do, I will thin the paint using some leveling thinner and Tamiya X20. After letting the first color of paint completely dry, 
I can go ahead and tape off the upper part of the craft and then I can go ahead and head right back to the paint booth. To mask off this section, I'm using some Tamiya masking tape. If you're worried about the paint underneath, I suggest putting the tape down on your desktop first, peel it off, and then put it on your model. This will remove a little bit of the tack from the tape and make it less likely to pull up your paint. And I'm using my favorite modeling tool of all time, the toothpick to burnish the edges down and make sure that they're nice and crisp. With the top masked off, I can go ahead and lay down some Tamiya Gloss Red. I'm going to add a few drops of black to get the red to be a little bit deeper, almost a maroon color. This paint is also thinned with leveling thinner in X20 and it's laid down in my normal manner. I start with a tack coat, then some medium coats, and then I wrap it all up with some wet coats. With everything dry, I can now do the last piece of the principal paint job. And I'm going to start by taping off the bow. The bow in the pictures I've seen is sort of a flat black. I assume that's to handle glare. I forgot about having to clear coat this later on in the build, so the flat is going to go away, but I'll deal with that later. Once everything's masked off, I can use a little Tamiya XF1 flat black paint, and I'm just going to brush paint this on because flat always dries nice and smooth. The original toy came with paper stickers for the serial numbers and for the British Union Jack. I took a bit of creative license here as I felt the call sign would show up and look better in white. I also opted to keep the arrangement the same for each side. This way the flag would be in the same spot on each side of the vessel. I created company logos for the top of the craft and small serial numbers for the bow and I printed them all out on my Alps printer. I think they came out great and look amazing, especially the white numbers on the red paint. I didn't forget the pod on the top of the vehicle. I primed it and painted it along with the casting. It's thoroughly dry, so now I can go ahead and glue it back to the roof using a little bit of JB Weld. Putting the pot on, it also reminds me that I still need to clear coat this casting. It means the black bow is going to be glossy instead of flat, but I think I have a plan for dealing with that, so I'll just go ahead and move forward. While the glue on the pod dries, I can go ahead and clean the base 
and then I'm going to brush some flat black on the lower part of the skirt just to give the base a little bit of visual interest. For this paint I'm just using Tamiya XF1 flat black paint and I'm going to thin it down just a little bit with water to make it go on smooth. Well, I'm closing in on it now. Back at the paint booth, I can lay down a clear coat by the Redline shop, and it really makes its thing sparkle. It's amazing. Looks great. After the clear is dry, I can go ahead and start putting the craft back together. To fix the black on the bow, I just brushed on some matte varnish from Vallejo, and that fixed everything up. It's a subtle difference, but the flat on the bow against the gloss of the ship really just adds so much to the vehicle. With everything back together, I can go ahead and turn my attention to a bit of detail painting. I'm going to put some little black dots on the end of the vents, and for the propeller, I'm going to use a little bit of Tamiya Metallic Chrome. Well, there it is. I can call this one done. In my humble opinion, it looks stellar. It really should have been done this way to begin with. Anyhow, here it is, my vision of the Matchbox SRN6 Hovercraft. I hope you love it as much as I do. Well, there you have it, the SRN6 Hovercraft by Matchbox. I think it came out amazing. The two-tone paint just really adds so much life to this thing. I think it's beautiful. I hope you do, too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe. Click the bell to be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I read everything you guys post. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Until next time, I hope you're being safe and happy and content and doing whatever it is you got to do to keep your head above water. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.